Dr. Sinha, Anu Sinha will be talking about the pregnancy and the eye. It's a comprehensive insight. This Thank you, sirs, and good morning, and welcome to this program. The objectives of this would be a myriad, you know, look at pregnancy and the eye. And the effects of physiological changes include the effects on the lid, which are cloasma, spinal angiomas, ptosis, and hypso magma in conjunctiva, which of course regresses. Raya gets aggravated due to differences in the hormones and the cytokines that occur, as well as dehydration due to hyperemesis, which is enhanced by contact lens use and therefore is best avoided. Contact, uh, cornea sensitivity decreases when thickness and curvature increase. The Krukenberg spin spindles may occur. Accommodative insufficiency and paralysis and myopic shift make refraction during this time very tricky. Intraocular pressure decreases by two to three millimeters, a 20% reject, reject, reduction in the third trimester due to increased UV scleral flow and decreased episcleral venous pressure. Collateral thickness increases maximally in the second trimester. And on pre-existing pre eye disorders, the uveitis goes uh, waxing and waning. But in general, the need for immunosuppressants reduces, especially in sarcoidosis or spondyloarthropathies, while postpartum endogenous candida endophthalmitis has been reported. Choroidal hemangiomas may show rapid growth, while some can regress postpartum. Um, ocular toxoplasmosis can reactivate and torch infection. Uh, monitoring is very important and treatment. Retinitis pigmentosa can show progression. Pregnancy is an independent risk factor for development and progression of uh, diabetic retinopathy in IDDM. And two to five percent diabetics uh, are there before conception. While gestational diabetic retinopathy rapidly progresses and regresses once pregnancy is terminated. The progression factors are the usual, while monitoring is needed without a diabetic retinopathy, three to 12 monthly, and in severe NPDR, it may be needed monthly or even three monthly, up to a year after delivery. Macular edema may occur, which may regress after delivery. The management is the same as this, and laser and surgery can be done as indicated. The Graves' disease is the most common cause of hyperthyroidism, which aggravates in the first trimester and undergoes a waxing and waning course. Drug of choice is propylthyroidacil. Glaucoma, both in ocular, ocular hypertensives as well as the open angle glaucoma, is reported to improve. Migraine attacks, the frequency may increase or decrease during pregnancy. With pregnancy-related diseases, there can be preeclampsia and eclampsia with different etiology, and it can lead to ocular symptoms, a myriad of them. And uh, ultimately, we can see some stages of retinal pathology, as in the spastic stage, angiospasm starts from the superior nasal retina, or followed by the sclerotic state, and ultimately, a frank hypertensive retinopathy, which may have all the you know, stigmata of hypertensive retinopathy, including serous retinal detachment. So this retinal detachment is more found in eclamptics than preeclamptics due to choroidal ischemia. And the HELP syndrome may also involve the eye with bilateral serous retinal detachment, it also, which is hemorrhage sometimes. There can also be cortical blindness and venous occlusion in preeclampsia and eclampsia. TTP can result in serous RD as well as optic disc edema. Antiphospholipid antibody syndrome can cause conjunctival telangiectasias and microneurisms, episcleritis, limbal filamentous keratitis, and aritis, while posterior segment findings include vitritis, retinal detachment, posterior sclerolitis, various vascular occlusions, tortuosity, hemorrhage, and soft ed exudates. There can also be CSR with fibrinous sub -ex retinal exudation, well as neuroophthalmologic changes can occur with including sinus thrombosis of the superior sagittal lateral and cavernous sinus with Krauss sign, very pathognomonic. The, there can also be posterior pituitary enlargement leading to various types of uh, visual field defects. The macroprolactinomas -pro can become symptomatic and increase the risk of miscarriage and prematurity and field testing and even surgical intervention may be required. Meningiomas can show accelerated growth due to receptors. Benign intracranial hypertension becomes very difficult to treat because of the adverse effects of ketosis on the fetus because of low birth weight and spontaneous abortion that can occur due to treatment and electrolytes need to be monitored very closely. Optic neuroneuritis and neuropathy may be there because of relapse in multiple sclerosis, while hyperemesis can lead to vitamin B deficiency with transient nerve palsies because of polyneuritis. 
uh, apart from this, about medications, we have some drugs for glaucoma, and it's important to have preconception counseling, and uh, brimonidine is the drug of choice for first and second trimesters along with bitoxolol. And in the second trimester, we might have oral carminic anhydrase inhibitors added uh, because prostaglandins can cause premature labor. In the third trimester, to prevent fetal apnea near term, it's important to switch to topical carminic anhydrase inhibitors. While as postpartum can carbonic anhydrase inhibitors and bitoxolol can be used, while laser can be opted for at any stage, but surgery is best in the second trimester. Uh, about the anesthetists, the proparacaine and bupivacaine are uh, not rec really recommended because of bradycardia in the fetus. Fluorescein dye is yet to be avoided, especially in the first trimester. Antibiotics like chloramphenicol, neomycin, and tetracycline are contraindicated because of adverse effects, while systemic tobramycin also is to be avoided, although topical tobramycin can be used. About antiallergics, antihistaminics are best avoided in this condition. About the uh, anti-inflammatory uh, drugs, uh, prednisolone is better to be used because it crosses the placenta somewhat less than dexamethasone, uh, and uh, interferons are safe, while as all other immunomodulators or uh, you know, uh, drug, other drugs may be embryotoxic and phytotoxic and are best not to be used. The treatment of neovascularization uh, carries the risk of miscarriages due to defective placental and fetal vasculature if anti are used or PTT is used. So a risk-benefit ratio has to be weighed, and the complete antibody bevacizumab is to be preferred as it does not cross the placenta. While as vertipoffin is a category C drug known to cause an or microphthalmia, and therefore not to be used. So to conclude, the awareness of physiological and pathological conditions is important for ocular health of pregnant women. The strategic response to patients with ocular diseases prevents possible risks to mother and baby, and ophthalmic medications with potential adverse effects on the mother and baby need to be prescribed with extreme caution. For paucity of time, I have eliminated the uh, complications ins uh, instituted with labor and delivery, like Sheehan syndrome, like post-traumatic stress disorder, like, etc. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Thank you, Dr. Soni Sinha. It's a very, very extensive uh, subject. It is very yes. difficult to cover it in seven minutes. Uh, minutes. Seven minutes. Totally, sir. But uh, most of the time, it is uh, the treatment which is really uh, difficult in uh, pregnancy. True. Because uh, with the introduction of uh, this uh, Google and all, if anything happens to the child, uh, they are going to sue us. Absolutely. So that's a big, big, sometimes it won't be related to this thing, but uh, some reports, they can find it from somewhere. So it is very important to have a, uh, explained everything to the patient. See, like uh, if it's a glaucoma patient. Uh, Absolutely. The risk-benefit ratio has to be weighed and counseled, properly counseled at every stage, sir. Any intervention before that, we have to counsel the patient. So, like a bribonidine also is a questionable thing because yes. it comes in the uh, group B, but uh, there are so many complications reported uh, Absolutely. after that. Absolutely. So, it's a real question, which medicine, what, uh, rather than this, which medicine you prefer, you should. So as of now, we will at least be supported by the written texts and published literature. So I do go with brimonidine, knowing uh, that counseling the patient as to the risks and the benefits. We if it is not controlled with And the then carbonic and inhibitors. Okay. Uh, Dr. Sony, can you just yeah. very extensive, but uh, as a general practitioner, what is your suggestion to go uh, for what type of examination should be done for the pregnant patient? Sir, I think uh, because of antenatal care is being taken up by the gynecologist, we should be counseling gynecologists to send the patient to us every time they're doing an antenatal checkup. I really, because if there's any sort of a complaint even before the pregnancy or there's a diabetic patient, all of them should be sending them to us. We do counsel, in my institution, I have counseled my gynecologist and of the obstetricians to this regard, sir. And that is the part of the gynecologist. Yes. We are sending to and you. Then but if in, in our patient department, any pregnant patient comes to you, uh, 
as the as an ophthalmist, what should you examine at that? So what we have to do. You have to elaborate. Uh, we have to do a complete history, sir. Taking then we have to, of course, do a comp comprehensive eye examination. I don't think that we can leave out even midriasis. Mm. So we have to uh, dilate the patient. We have to see the anterior and posterior segments quite thoroughly. And after that, if needed, we have to go in for investigation, non-invasive ones like OCT. And if at all fluorescent angiography is indicated, avoid it in the first trimester. But if it is it's a must, then we have to go in for that also. It is, and then uh, newer modalities like OCTA coming in, maybe uh, <coughs> that would be a better modality in being non-invasive for the you know, retinopathies and things like that. Okay. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Thank, Thank you. you.